very special guest today in the building, uh, virtual building that is. We are here with uh, Thomas Ha Robson. Thank you, Thomas, for being here with us today. He is a uh, forward for the West Brom team, a Premier League uh, team, but also he is the founder of Turmeric. So, Thomas, thank you for being here today. How are you feeling? Yeah, fantastic. Really good to be here uh, with you both. Uh, and yes, um, feeling good, feeling good. Um, uh, enjoying everything that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm participating in in a minute, which I think is key. Uh, so, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So I'm going to start, I always start this podcast asking a question. How did you get into e-commerce? Your story is crazy. And I, I admit I was very excited about this episode. So just to give people a, a, a bit of a background, uh, Thomas is a professional football player. He plays in the Premier League. And uh, he has, I think, 45 international caps to your name, if mm -hmm. I'm correct. Cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, he's the founder of Turmeric. And this company produces a wide range of turmeric shots to help enhance health and energy levels. And it's clear, you know, that uh, for Thomas, wellness and looking after yourself is something that you value a lot. So tell us, how did you move from Premier League to, uh, you know, premier, uh, premium health, as I call it? Yeah, so, um, well, it's, it's good to be able to be doing both at the same time, um, which I'm fortunate enough to be doing uh, at this present moment. Um, but yeah, the how it happened was that uh, effectively we had created, so my family, when I was young, um, created effectively a blend of natural ingredients, one of which was turmeric roots, um, which ultimately helped me recover from some major injuries, which standard medication and prescription drugs weren't uh, helping me recover from. So the power, power of this natural ingredient um, effectively changed my life. And it was in 2016 when I saw a turmeric shot um, from, a very, from a random brand on the shelf in, in, a, in a store in London called Harrods. And I bought it because, you know, I'd, I'd used it throughout my career. Um, and, you know, using these, uh, creating these shots by hand is very, very difficult. Um, anyone who knows uh, about turmeric as a natural raw root will know that it's a really hard root to use on a consistent daily basis. But we had perfected a, a way of doing this at home. Um, but seeing it on shelf was, you know, for, from convenience perspective, was phenomenal to see. So, you know, uh, as a young footballer, you do, you bought the whole shelf, you know, took them home, very excited to show my family. Um, and we went to drink it and we all had to spit it out. It was, you know, made of apple juice. It was made with turmeric powder. Um, it clearly wasn't made for function. Um, and, and what we had created out of necessity um, was, you know, truly a functional blend. Um, and this was back in 2016. So it was at that point where we then did some research into the um, turmeric market and began realizing that um, although we had been using this ingredient for over a decade, a lot of um, clinical studies and research had been um, conducted throughout that time, which were beginning to support the uh, natural benefits um, of, of uh, turmeric as, as an ingredient um, and for health. And so we then looked into the turmeric market and re realized that it was a growing market. There were, there were growing trends within the market, but then we actually looked into the market itself and realized that 0% of the products on the market actually offered the function that you should be getting from turmeric. And that's because they were either powdered capsules. Um, they would they would say it's a turmeric shot, but they would have ninety nine percent apple juice in, and you know zero point two percent turmeric powder. And so, what we then did, you know, we we realised that we had to bring what we were making at home to market, and we basically went on a journey um, of two years in terms of building a brand building a production facility uh, to produce uh, the, the 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 range and the quality of what we were making at home at scale which really wasn't easy um, i'm sure over time we'll share some some really interesting footage and some you know videos around the journey um, you know as we continue to grow um, but we built this bespoke production facility um, uh, scaled up the process, uh, yeah, built a team, 
um, who's dedicated in, in, in a mission of bringing natural health to as many people as possible through our range. Um, and we launched in 2018. And um, uh, prior to launch, probably, um, you know, well, during the whole process, we had the discussion within the business around whether we should look to penetrate retail. So, you know, bricks and mortar, look to get the, sh the, the, the product on shelves. Um, or whether we should, um, you know, build a, it as a digitally native vertical brand and look to offer a direct consumer um, experience through the brand. And this was my preference um, because, you know, I'm, I'm still, you know, very into technology. Um, you know, uh, it was a massive, uh, you know, I like everything technological now, uh, you know, whether it's communication, whether it's, you know, blockchain technology, I'm, I'm you know, I, I like to, to be involved in it all. And from my perspective, um, at that time, which is still, obviously a lot has changed since then, but it was clear to me that we were seeing a shift in consumer um, purchasing behavior and that it was shifting towards that, um, you know, the convenience in terms of receiving the product um, you know, the, the, the habitual nature of, you know, um, ordering direct from your, your, uh, your preferred brand of choice. Um, and so we, we, we went down this route. And again, because it's a fresh product, it's chilled. It has to be kept chilled. So on top of the layer of, uh, you know, building a brand, building a, a product at scale, building a production facility, building a team, we then had to build a layer of logistically being able to deliver this freshly chilled product to consumers um door uh, without any um issues and um and yeah we launched in 2018 and um have grown month on mo month on month of uh, year on year um and uh, yeah last year uh, you know it was uh, obviously given what happened it was uh, i'm sure we'll go through it but uh, but yeah it, it's been a fantastic experience so Thomas, uh, I have a question uh, to to ask you, which is actually coming from uh, from Barry. How long would a person need before noticing some effect uh, of the product? I do know the answer, but <laughs> you let us know as well. Yeah. So um, again, so for customer feedback is phenomenal. You know, we've got nearly ten thousand customer reviews. You know, talking about the impact that the product and the range has had on their health and well being, um, and everyone is um very different so we we, we get a, a variety of customer feedback some customers will say from the moment they took their first shot they would noticed the difference whether it be an uplift uh, you know a reduction of you know inflammation and a reduction of pain or whether it's the consistent usage of the product over a four to six week period where they have ultimately um you know built up that additional nutri nutrition into their body and then begin to realize that they, you know, they wake up fresher, they're not as stiff in the morning, um, or they just have mm -hmm. a, a higher level of well-being. Um, one thing we are experiencing, though, is that um, a lot of customers, our customers, and you know, obviously a lot of society, because we have been, um, we're in a, um, a westernized diet. So, so our, our diet does not consist of um, what we, what our bodies historically in terms of our ancestors have been used to and this shift has happened relatively quickly in terms of you know if you look at our ancestors whether it be thousands of years the diets that they would eat as opposed to say the last you know 100 years where we have very rapidly shifted towards a commercialized fast food um nutrient depleted um uh, uh, uh supply you know, you know products um mm -hmm. and uh, driven through convenience taste um and ultimately you know um the companies supplying it they're, they're seeing you know they're, they're seeing growth in these in these products so why not deliver more products to them even though it's harming society and things like um you know there's never been a higher level of you know disease throughout our society in our history you know so for all of our technological advancements and everything that you know we, we have access to that seems a little bit off and, and fundamentally that's down to nutrition. So what we've experienced with a lot of our customers is that um, it, they're, they're, they're already nutrient deficient. So because our products and, you know, the, 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 the shots are so powerful in, in the sense that they have 
you know, they're packed with, um, you know, compounds which people just won't have consumed in their life, whether that be curcumin, um, you know, ginger oil, whether it be, um, you know, uh, um, uh, the black pepper extract or piperin extract, and then combined all together, the the the, the power of this uh, this blend immediately has an impact you know once consumed and you know it's um it's really good to see but it's it's nature so we're not um we're not a supplement we've just harnessed nature's most powerful foods and and offer it to to our customers in a convenient manner so that's awesome uh i wanna i wanna take like a step back when you were uh moving from home to uh you know a more productized environment where you can you know mass um produce the the product and also distribute it and uh, a lot of people watching because i have the privilege to see who's watching right now are e-commerce uh, entrepreneurs that just started the business and a lot of them have their business still in their kitchen right or in their living room and they're doing everything from their home so uh what would be like uh your main cha what were your main challenges back then and how you overcame them and what's your advice on how you can move from living room yeah to, I, I would uh, say the biggest the biggest um the biggest thing you need to do is initially get that brand awareness and through a community. So you want to um, have that initial traction um, within, um, you know, whether it's through the product or through the brand to actually pull in, you know, get eyes on, on, on your, you know, on what you're offering. Um, I think if you can do that and then almost develop a compounding effect where you then, you know, that through word of mouth, a majority of the time, because of what you're offering is whether it's unique or different, um, then you can begin to build a community that way. The the big thing is, you know, a lot, I know, and a lot of my friends, you know, I'm, I'm, I know lots of different founders in the space now, from ranging from, you know, whether it be, you know, one million turnover businesses, you know, and last week I was, you know, sat in a meeting room, well, uh, not sat in a meeting room, sat in a digital meeting room with a with a founder of a. Um, uh, 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 an online brand which has done 100 million revenue in, in in over the last 12 months so all of their experiences is you know it, 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 they all do say the same thing and it's almost like you you don't want to run before you can walk you want to really make sure that what you're offering you know has a good product market fit but then you're able to actually um you know communicate the message not on a one-off basis so it has some form you know it's sticky you know you have to have that sort of element of traction with it and and sometimes it may not be because the product isn't good it may be because of the way you're communicating with your 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 customer or your audience and that may be prior to you know purchasing or post purchasing and you know and it's all you know if you can get that initial community that initial traction of loyalists around what you're doing um then you know, then I think um, I think it 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 offers you a, a base layer to to accelerate from, and ultimately, there's um, the point where I was going to say before is everyone thinks you know let's go and you know let's get onto Facebook ads and let's get onto you know Google search, Google shopping, and it's it's really you know that that that's not the that's not the first step which you want to sort of run with. I love that. Come on. Sorry, Valentin, yeah. for cutting. So, so Thomas, <laughs> tell us a bit about your, uh, let's say, how were the, how was your family seeing your new, your new venture back then? Because uh, I can bet that there were maybe there was some resistance. Everyone were uh, aware about your identity as a footballer, and now suddenly you want to be an entrepreneur, and not only an entrepreneur in 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 sports, but in something which is related. But it's uh, let's say. Uh, nearby mm, yeah it's really a question i think um unfortunately you know prior to launching that i had sort of um not proven myself in the business world but i'd showed um you know uh, whether it was in a few different companies i've been involved in a few different ventures and um mm. I, I i showed quite early on in my life that i liked things outside of sport so yeah. generally when i would sort of get into something it would be, um, you know, I'd be really serious about it. And um, often than not, you know, I'd find a way to make it work, um, you know, depending on the scale, you know, and I've sort of got a knack for doing that, whether it be sort of, you know, being a, 
a teenager wanting to play in the Premier League and international football and achieving it, or you know whether it be um, you know looking into blockchain technology at a really sort of early stage and you know sort of um, educating some people on that very early on, um, or whether it be um, you know bringing a a very when I, when I think about it you know sort of in conception it's so random you know a turmeric shot um, you know it's like to build a brand or to begin, you know, I, I still feel like we're just starting, but, you know, to, to begin to build a brand around a turmeric shot, a turmeric beverage is so, so random. Um, but to have achieved the, the level of traction that we've achieved to date and seeing the more traction we achieve, the more potential we see is available. Um, so it, you know, it all, almost makes us work harder or makes, you know, make, make it increases my drive. Um, the more we progress, so um, so yeah, so so my they, they, they were uh, they, they we all knew the power of the product, so we knew the product was good because it had effectively you know saved my professional career. Um, but it was about whether or not you know every day you know the everyday Joe would be interested in a turmeric shop, and um, we we it was a it, everything's a risk that you do you know it's, it's um you know life is about taking risks and some some are calculated some are you know well you want to try and make as many calculated you know uh, risks uh, which are decisions as possible and um and yeah for us it's um it's one which uh, we're ple pleased we met we made because um you know the the impact that uh, you know being able to offer this product to to more people is um is is a is a unique experience uh i love that i want to again go back to something you said earlier which uh is something that uh, i wish i would hear more from uh from an e-commerce owner you mentioned product market fit and building loyalty and awareness around your product but also understanding if the market needs your product and uh from my experience there are a lot of e-commerce brands that start a, a company and they are expecting people to already want the product even if they don't do anything you know to 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 move the the you know potential audience to that direction so can you give me like a few example of what you guys did to uh understand the market and to achieve product market fit because i think this is very valuable a lot of people don't do this yeah so the first thing um well the first thing that we did um which unfortunately, you know, people, brands aren't able to do at this moment in time, but hopefully COVID depending, um, or in the UK at least, we will be able to at some point, is we did trade shows. So we we went to, you know, seven or eight trade shows um, over the course of a 12 month period under the previous brand of what we, you know, what we sort of wanted to test the product out under and we just got customer feedback and so we would be sampling at these trade shows we'd introduce them to you know the business to the product and each trade show we probably met you know i'd probably say minimum five thousand people would have you know we'd have five or six of the team and this is the early days of the business and everyone hated me for doing it but it was something that we needed to do so we we invested into this and we said no this is important so we'd go here each person over the course of four days you know would speak to you know upwards of a thousand people the same line you know this is a turmeric health shot this is this is why now anyone in the team now is just you know can can uh, you know express what it is you know with their eyes closed and um and that, that that was that was the key for us. And the crazy thing is, is that some of our most loyal customers now will still talk about first seeing us at one of these shows, whether it was a running show that we did. The, you know, there's in the UK, there's a running show, there's health and wellness, there's balance festivals, and all of these shows, which again we 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 obviously understood what market you know who would be our market audience so we targeted these shows we didn't go to you know just random trade shows it was you know relevant to health well-being nutrition and so um and yeah and it's incredible now as i said the, the amount of customers who are our most loyal customers now who first spotted us at these trade shows and this is you know sort of three four years ago um and so that allowed us uh, to, to basically get capture 
cu customer data who we knew were actual potential customers as opposed to you know whether it be a lookalike audience from you know um you know uh, um someone who's uh, convert um uh, engaged with an ad that you're running whatever you know well no these are actual people who are interested in health and wellness and so that allowed us to build a base from that and we built a contact list from that um from the participants there from that contact list we identified who are uh, individuals of significance so then we built um you know as as we would go to each trade show we'd then build a list of uh, individuals who we'd want to retarget and try and um activate through our brand so then whether they be influencers but then their influencers where you're not engaging with them through direct message you've actually had a personal conversation with them and they understand the investment that you have within the brand so they're more likely to to take what you're saying seriously and and effectively from each of those we built up a swell an audience a customer base a community and by the last one you know we were launching it was effectively around the time we were launching into the, the Whole Foods and the Planet Organics and we were being listed into the Kicks U London gym, BXR gyms, which are some of the top London gyms. But we had effectively met their nutritionists at the, some of these shows and the nutritionists then bought into what we were doing. And then it's just, you know, it's a compounding effect. And we still we still have that methodology within the business now. If you if you continue to do the right things and you make um you know your 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 um if you do the right things on a daily basis as you achieve those um those tasks objectives more opportunities open and are created and this is what we're experiencing now you know we're 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 in the process of you know signing official sponsorship uh, partnerships with some of the top clubs sports teams in europe and once these partnerships are um, uh, signed, it's opening up the door to new partnerships, and it's the same concept. And um, you know, and whether it's you know, we've got some really exciting news about retailers, um, you know, coming up over the next few months as well. And it's just that growing compounding effect. And um, and yeah, so I would say this the long answer to your question. I would say you know, you have to how did we do it we actually immersed ourselves into our who would be our community but also our customers and audience um as best possible and are you reproduce and you're saying also that you're trying to reproduce that with the customers that you have on your uh, direct to consumer website because i always see you post about how much your mm -hmm. customers mean to you so i think you come with a healthy type of uh, mentality towards you know loyalty and delivering experiences to customers because Precisely. you had lived this before and i think it's awesome and i yeah, think it's awesome yeah, yeah. Cool. thomas regarding the uh, regarding the positioning you um let's say you've like you've said you've immersed yourself but you you had some points of difference uh, uh i want you to uh, to tell us a bit about how difficult it was to 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 ship products which are actually chilled products and uh, uh how was that decision because i can bet that the the, the prices for the the delivery pricing was com completely different than if you would be i don't know uh delivering tablets of turmeric or star mm. powder mm. yeah no that's a that's a really good question so so the, the point of difference, so so that was the big thing that we realized in terms of bringing the product to market. It was, you know, how can we communicate these to our customers? And um, the, the way that we could communicate them was, you know, by, by effectively, um, you know, really owning the fact that it's a chilled, natural, fresh product. And as well, that it's come out of our own bespoke production facility. Um, and as well that it's a unique blend, which effectively is our, you know, almost like our trademark secret, which is the blend and the process that we use to extract these. You know, we we looked into, you know, I did extensive research around um, white label production and, and I went to these big manufacturing companies of beverages and juices. And I said, you know, can you, could you pot potentially produce a really bespoke blend? And they would say, what, it, what is it? And we would say, you know, obviously, you don't give away what it the, the actual uh, specification, but it was 
you know, uh, well, to raw turmeric roots, um, you know, uh, fresh pineapple, um, fresh pineapples, fresh watermelons. So you have to buy these watermelons whole. Then you have to slice them. You either have technology to slice them or manually slice them. And by the time I've finished, they've already closed the door because they're, they're <laughs> like, no, no, no. They they, they want they want turmeric powder, you know, shipped from, you know, um, uh, halfway across the world. Uh, you know, uh, pasteurized juice, which means that the juice can remain ambient for up to twelve months. But when that happens, it's it's a lost over 50%, between 50 and 100% of its nutritional value. So you're basically drinking sugar and water. And these juices are being, we're giving these juices to our kids. And so our, our difference was that the quality of the product. And so we realized that although it would mean short-term pain in that we would be, uh, our costs would be high. Um, you know, we would be, uh, you know, we may make a loss on, 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 you know, shipping a product because if we ship a product and it doesn't get delivered, um, the re-delivery means that we're now paying the customer to, 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 to drink our shots. Um, but we had to make that decision very early on. And, um, and so we effectively, you know, um, researched chilled distribution, um, uh, uh options and you know there were multiple options and we, we found that um you know within a um a den denim insulated um uh, wrap with a ice pack um the products could remain chilled for up to 72 hours and um again speaking with various couriers you know we found a courier who could you know guarantee delivery of you know within you know 48 hours but we all obviously wanted it next day and so we agreed an agreement next day and you know, when you look at the the, the, the margins on products and all of a sudden it's like, you know, the cost of goods and then you've got, you know, all of a sudden that that um, that margin for distribution to delivery is, you know, really creeping up. But that was the short term pain because we knew that when we had, um, when our customers tried the product, um, you know, the, the product would do a lot of the heavy lifting for us and it, and it has done and, and, and it's, um, you know, um, and to the previous point again, so very early on, we realized that the repeat purchase rate was the key because, you know, that the, the whole lifetime value of the customers is where we could justify, you know, the, the initial investment in what we would, you know, in, in how we ship the product, the quality of the product. And so we, you know, we are very early on implemented a really robust subscription model um, through our products and look to incentivize our customers to participate in the subscription model um, whether that be through, you know, receiving the product at a discounted price when purchasing through subscription, um, or whether that be through, you know, faster shipping on subscriptions when we've been, you know, overloaded with capacity, um, and um, and yeah, and 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 that was that was the model and the method methodology which we've gone for, gone for, and you know, we, we've uh, we've built a really strong pattern now. Um, you know, we've got a, a, a really strong swell of of loyal customers and. Um, we've got some really exciting opportunities over the next 12 months to uh, to, to really accelerate the growth. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Thomas, uh, I have a question regarding the not the let's say the the product and the positioning and the points of difference, but how you've uh, how you've researched the the, the competition let's say, and uh, how you've made the positioning because you've made the the, uh, the positioning looks like you've made it consciously. It, it wasn't uh, a decision to, it was a decision to use the brand with, to, to, to put an equal sign be, be, between the company and, and the product uh, as well. Yeah, so a lot of thought went into this and um, <clears throat> It was around uh, communicating the product as quickly as possible to the customer, and and what we realised was that within this market there is so much noise. And within every market there is, but within the um, you know you only have to go into a UK health shop and see the amount of shots which are on the shelf, um, which all purport you know benefits and quality, which which you know I think. Fundamentally, because of us entering the market, we have helped increase the level of the quality. And we, you know, whether it's alternative options, they've, you know, they, they've had to increase the quality of what they're offering. Um, but it is still, 
you know, really, really low in terms of, you know, what you would expect to receive from that sort of, um, you know, that category, which, you know, is all around health, natural nutrition. Um, you know, if you pull back the veil, there's not a lot of substance there. And so we wanted to be, you know, um, a driver for that substance. And we realized that, <clears throat> you know, we could name our, our the brand and we could look at, you know, a funky name and, you know, create it as a, you know, um, have fun with it in terms of, you know, trying to spin it off into, you know, various different other product categories. But we knew that the core of what we were doing was based around turmeric. And so um, we very really, re we also realized that, you know, if we can own the turmeric space, we're going to own in time a large portion of the natural nutrition space because turmeric as a functional ingredient is going to be a key player in that. And just mm -hmm. because of the clinical uh, studies which are ongoing, and um, and we wanted to deliver it from that natural perspective and begin to sort of clean up this this market where, you know, no one goes to um, uh, and and what we realised as well was that not no one goes to um, you know the health shop and buys a turmeric shot to you know um, relinquish their thirst or to refresh themselves. It's not people don't do that so. Um, you know, or, or health shot in general. People are taking health shots for a reason and for a purpose. And so we we realise that well, actually, you know, we, let, let let's own that space. You know, let's own that. Let's incorporate that into our brand, um, and you know, uh, and champion it. And so we did that through the conceptualization of the brand and you know the the the, the ringed logo, which you know is um, is very much around you know earth and the core. Um, you know, and, and the the essence of you know basically uh, Mother Nature, um, and you know we 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 put the turmeric company on top of it, and fortunately enough, we, we were lucky enough to to get the trademark, and um, we own some really strong domains around it too. I love it. I love it, and uh, I uh, I think it's awesome, and I think uh, the fact that you're thinking about category design and or championing categories, I think. That's the way to go. And I think it's a very big gap in the e-commerce uh, market in general because people are thinking in terms of, you know, uh, short-term wins rather than playing the long-term game. And uh, which which prompts me to uh, to ask you one question. Given uh, how much this industry has changed, you know, due to COVID and, uh, you know, the whole digital transformation of the industry, what is one thing right now that keeps you up at night? What is something you're struggling with at the moment? Um yeah well, i think we you know everything is um there's always a, there's always something which you can improve you know there's always something which you can do better so so what what's probably you know what keeps me up at night is probably actually just saying you know we we're, we're doing okay you know i think um, i probably need to do that more often and say well actually you know we we're, we're doing okay you know we've done you know better okay better than okay but i think um yeah so but in terms of you know what keep what could keep you up at night, you know, in the e-commerce space, you know, multiple things, you know, there's, there's, there's so many variables at play. And, you know, actually it was really interesting because, um, you know, whether it's through, um, you know, I, I was uh, speaking with some individuals a couple of months ago and they were talking about, um, they're very much in the um, private equity, you know, investment space. And, you know, they were talking to me around, you know, having invested in a few different brands and businesses and, they were of the, but they, they're very much um, sort of uh, bricks and mortar. They like safe investments. And so we were talking, I began talking a bit about, you know, my, my company and we spoke, you know, a little bit and gave, gave some details. And um, they actually were um, looking at the e-com space in, in a negative way in that there were so many uh, variables which could actually then create risk. And so for them, they wouldn't value a specific business in a certain way and i and i was just like you know that that's that that's fine they're, you know they're older and they're you know they're, they're they're safe with what they do which is completely you know perfectly fine but it, it just um i think the, the the gap which they're probably missing is the you know the, the phenomenal opportunity in terms of scalability with with the with the uh, uh, online and i think that's that's really the exciting aspect with it you know if you can 
scale your product and you know whether it's you know penetrating into new markets penetrating you know through uh, product variations and um, which you know are still core to the to the values of the brand then i think actually you know the the value there in my opinion is makes it multiple fold as opposed to you know having a listing in say for example sainsbury's or marks and spencers i don't know if you know these uh yeah, these yeah. companies yeah. yeah so 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 they would say well if you had you know if you had that sort of rate of sale through sainsbury's or through mns then it would be secure and we would you know and then then the value of that for us is higher but then i would say well actually no the value for me is higher being able to deliver directly to my consumer because you know i know them i'm building a relationship <laughs> with them and i can actually exactly. scale through these uh, through these people as opposed to having to scale through you know a retailer a third party to then grow a brand mm -hmm. so yeah so um so yeah so what what keeps me up at night yeah so i think there's lots, you know, supply chain, you know, uh, uh, fulfillment chain, uh, you know, um, everything. But it's part and parcel of the journey. I don't think it's, um, you know, I think we're, we're all very fortunate. Um, so, so, yeah. I like what you said about, uh, let's talk a bit about this uh, thing with uh, the brick and mortars and uh, the direct to consumer. I think this is a very cool topic because, so uh, let me ask you, European, this is me with my crazy curiosities right now. Um, I see that a lot of people that are selling are used to sell, you know, in stores and retail and whatever. When they approach online, they approach it as you said, with super, you know, you know, a lot of caution, right? They are afraid of everything, so they take like the most calculated small risks. And uh, I wanted to because you have, you know, this contact with them. Maybe you can explain to me why is this uh, fear of online? And I feel like a lot of people, uh, Barry is asking you, but your best football, football player that you played against. <laughs> Wait a second, Barry, I'm getting to that part too. <laughs> no, but real, this is a real question. Why do you think there's this status quo when it comes to online selling? Because I think a lot of people that go from brick and mortars, they create a, 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 a store, they hire people for the job, but they don't let them do anything. And they don't let them to do, you know, to do absolutely nothing to grow. And they're just, you know, blaming it on, I don't know, they're charging it to the game. So why do you think there's the status quo? Why is this, why is this fear mm. if you know people like this? Mm. It's a completely different mentality, completely different. The, the perception of, um, of how to, um, to sell a product is, is completely different. So retail, with retail, you don't, um, say, for example, your brand and your, your objective is to get into retail you don't really care too much about your consumer as crazy as that sounds what you care about is the relationship you have with the retailer so if you have a strong relationship with the retailer then they can give you prime position in store which we all know around you know whether it's um you know subliminal messaging you know the consumer behaviors consumer patterns of where things are located in store you can naturally you can gain an, an, a natural rate of sale just by being present in retail. So that means you haven't done any form of research around or insights into your customer. You have just won a listing with a retailer and now you're present. And again, there's a lot of research and data which says just simply about the fact that it, it's on shelf or there's convenience to it it, it will sell regardless of what it is. And so, so that mentality is um, more of a, um, um, a contract mentality. So it's like, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, we, we, we're trying to win this contract from this retailer. And when we win it, we, we're, we've sort of, you know, we're in retail and we're, we're sort of, you know, good. We can sort of see the numbers, whereas, direct consumer is a massive shift from that because actually it's i need to give the consumer all of the value i need to be giving them complete everything i need to give them the experience on the site i need to give them the experience with um post checkout so they are communicated in the right way prior to their order even being dispatched i need to give them the experience of when the order is through fulfillment and with the courier so they're being kept up to date i need them to give i need to give them the experience of when they first touch the product open the product taste the product 
I need to then give them the experience of following up with them to make sure that they had good customer satisfaction, they were pleased with it, but then I need to follow up with how did they, what, what, was, uh, what was their experience with it? Did they have any feedback? And then we want to follow up with, well, after that, what would you be, you know, would you promote our product? Would you be, uh, you know, would you recommend our product to others? And, you know, are you going to be a regular user of the product? So for, from a, a brand's perspective, you, you're giving so much more, you have to give so much more through that customer journey and experience by selling online. And this is why retailer, um, brands who sell into retail first and come to online are completely lost because they don't grasp the concept. And even if they heard me say that now, they still wouldn't know what it actually means to implement that as a, as a, as a base level of service for your brand. And that is the only way to, you know, to deliver an experience which is going to you know, ultimately drive a level of growth through um, you know, the, the experience that you have with the brand. It's true. So who's the best fo footballer that you've played against? <laughs> um, best footballer I've played against? Um, I would probably say, two, 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 I've played against quite a few. Um, I would have to say, um, for, for football, I would say Luka Modric, so former Real Madrid, uh, played against him when, when, when he was at Tottenham. He was just a very special player. Um, but for sort of global status, I would probably say, you know, um, it was Cristiano Ronaldo. He was, um, he was very good and he, he, uh, we played against him in the semi-final of the European Championship. So, um, yeah, he was, uh, he was the best one. Valentin, since you kindly introduced me to this part of our football, <laughs> I was, so I have a lot of questions. I, what, first of all, I don't know what's happening this season. I gave up on this season, mostly because uh, I'm a Liverpool fan, and I, after 68, you know, undefeat, uh, we were undefeatable for four years. Mm. Now we're losing everything, and it and it breaks my heart to say that, but. I'm happy, you know, there are people that are doing worse than us. <laughs> right? Yeah, true. So I want to I wanna ask you first, just because I want to ease in into this topic, are your colleagues from West Brom using, uh, using your product? And what are they saying about it? Yeah, they use it religiously. Um, we actually supply into um, all, of the, all of the teams throughout the, the UK. The majority of the Premier League teams now, you know, sort of purchase our product. Um, yeah. rugby, um, athletics, um, yeah, it's really good. So in terms of sport, we are, um, we're seeding nicely into, you know, habit forming and, and educating, um, you know, pe people who really it should matter most because that's their job in terms of their health. So athletes, um, you know, we're educating them extremely well around the, the benefits of consuming, um, you know, uh, our range on a regular basis. So, yeah. You should probably send some to Jurgen Klopp because I think he needs them right now. Uh, I wanna, I wanna ask you, what do you think about uh, you know the relegation battles? Are you gonna, you know, are you gonna win against Sheffield United? What's gonna happen there? Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's part and parcel of football. It's it's all part of the journey, and I think um, you know, we're we're, we're dedicated to it. We're, we're we're training extremely hard. You know, the managers come in, and you know, he's he's uh, got his own style, and you know, he's given us that belief. Um. Uh, it's been unfortunate the last few games. I think we, we could have won a few of the games that we drew um, and the one that we lost, we, you know, we probably should have drawn. And if we'd won those, we'd probably be, you know, sort of level of points, um, you know, in terms of that relegation battle. But I think, I think you know... Everton, right? Yeah, precisely. Yeah, so they scored late on and we had a goal disallowed in the you know, last minute. And I think, um, as I said, we, we'll give ourselves, you know, the best opportunity possible um, and, you know... Um, Stranger things have happened uh, in the world, and you know we're we're committed to to, to, to you know to, to to fighting and saving um, uh, uh, the, the the season from relegation, which would be uh, amazing. So, uh, Valentin, sorry. So, as a <laughs> as a football as a football player, I played sports, so I played basketball, oh, and cool. uh, 
as a football player, you need discipline, right? You cannot do without discipline. So what would you think, do you think in your career as an entrepreneur, as an e-commerce founder, what are some things that you took from your, you're taking from your football career that you apply to being, a, you know, an entrepreneur in the e-commerce world? And, you know, it helps you, uh, I guess, deal with everything that you have to deal with. Yeah, um, it's a good question. I think um, uh, the, the, the biggest, uh, the biggest one is, um, Firstly, around the team. So I'd say um, that the team is everything, and that's something which I learned in football. Um, if you have a team who can stick together, um, who is committed, uh, you know, to the business as the, you know, as the the, the, the leading individual, um, and uh, you have a good team spirit, it, it can it counts. It carries lots of weight, um, and whether it's your productivity or output, um, it, it can go through the roof and. So the first key aspect is team, um, uh, and I think uh, that that is something which I've transferred into into the business, and something which is really core cool to me. And it, you know, if I notice things within the team, or you know, team members unhappy, or you know, issues arising, then you know, I, I take note and I take it very seriously. So, um, so that's a, that's a big one. Um, from football, as you said, it's, you have to be dedicated. Um, it's harder to become a professional footballer. In the English um, leagues than it is to get into Oxford or Cambridge University. Um, so you know whether it's that two two thousand individuals, you think you know e every year uh, the amount of young boys and young girls who want to become professional footballers when they're kids, the very few who make it. You know whether it's two thousand at any given time playing professionally in the UK. Um, so that comes from you know having a level of de uh, self discipline and also a level of self belief. Um, and I think those two aspects is something which I took into, you know, into into entrepreneurship um, and into the business, you know, believing in what we're doing, uh, believing in the journey, believing that, you know, we're, we're here for a bigger cause. Um, that's very powerful and it gives you, um, you know, gives you energy and it gives you a level of power, which, you know, helps you overcome challenges. Um, and then the discipline, um, you know, being able to show that level of discipline to, you know, have whether it's an immaculate level of detail, you know, whether it's making sure no turn is un stone is unturned um, and, and being able to really sort of drive, drive the business forward, um, you know, in, in a consistent pattern. Um, I think if you if you can apply those two together and support that with the team, um, you can begin to you know, develop a formula for a level of success. Love that. That's amazing, Thomas. Regarding how you're uh, how you're running your uh, your e-commerce, which are your most important, uh, let's say, metrics that you're that you're looking uh, at every let's say month or week, and what do you suggest to other uh, e-commerce entrepreneurs to uh, to to follow, let's say, mm -hmm. to track? Yeah, I think um, the big ones, which uh, you know, um, which we we've always, which initially were very hard to to track as um, sort of a young business, was you know the lifetime value of your customer, and, and you know pegging that over a cost of acquisition, but a true cost of acquisition, you know, so actually embedding it into all of the marketing spend which you're putting in, you know, not not just the ad spend if you're running ads. Um, you know, or the commercial spend which you're, you know, using to to drive traffic or have events or whatever it is. So that's that that's a really key one for me. Um, and then, you know, I think from our perspective, we've always wanted to, um, you know, drive the AOV up. So, you know, understanding, um, you know, from a convert from a strong conversion rate, you know, looking to drive the AOV. And I think these sort of all of the metrics obviously are always intertwined and they, they they support or you know offset with one another to a degree and if you can if you can have a a, a consistent improvement on each of these areas then 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 fundamentally you're you're, you're you know you're going to see a level of growth but the the big one you know um uh, for us is is certainly the um you know having having that true um that true cost of acquisition true lifetime value um and then um you know attaching that to to, to, to understanding from an from an acquisition perspective um aob um, and conversion rate um as well as cac so yeah so those are the sort of 
main metrics but there's the, it's fascinating because there's so many other models now so there's um there's an interesting model which is like a, a cm so like a cash multiplier so it's people will you know say for example it's lifetime value and you do lifetime value over cac well actually what your cash multiplier does is it brings down your lifetime value to say a 60 day period so within that 60 day period you would then say um take out the margin of the the product so you're actually getting a true um a reflection of you know cash in hand then having a true cost of acquisition and then through that cash multiplier you can see actually what cash flow is coming into the business so then that allows you to you know from a management perspective actually look at your cash flow and see how your cash flow is actually being affected month on month and it, 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 if your cash flow is good and healthy then actually it's a sign to you know begin to to potentially scale what you're doing because you're you're doing the right things so but yeah it's um we're always learning i'm always learning and i i i, I, I want to you know t take on board as much as possible to to, to offer me uh, you know continual support I love the cash multiplier. It also gives you like a time frame to have, you know, to see what you're working with to build in the that period of time the chance to get people to buy again. So I love the cash yeah. multiplier methodology. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. We have a question here from actually, oh, I know Nelson. Okay, he's one of my friends. So we have a, a question from Nelson Brandao Fio. I hope I said his name right. Of course not, probably. Uh, he's asking you, is Brexit affecting e your e-commerce operation somehow? What is your perception regarding Bre uh, Brexit under an e-commerce perspective? Yeah, Brexit has been really tough. Um, not, for, not for us, thankfully, at this stage, because our main market was the UK. Um, but if we were distributing at this moment in time into europe we would have it would have been a disaster and one of my friends um he 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 he, he owns a um a cbd company and um they were distributing because obviously it's ambient you know small small weighted goods easy to distribute wherever they were distributing i think they had 80 percent of their market was between germany and spain and then 20 percent was uk and they got hit really, really hard because um, what was happening was that when the they were still able to ship, but when it was arriving into the European destination, the customer was receiving a customs charge. So the customer was it was you know whether it was DPD uh, D, uh, DHL um, whoever it was, they would say, "Hey, customer, you you've spent eighty pounds on this order. Now spend another twenty two pounds to actually get it delivered." And that you know depleted very quickly their 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 um, their European customer base. So we we're, we're fortunate in that we we um, the regulations. Are, you know, I'd be here for a few hours if I sort of translated the meetings that I've sat in around you know how we successfully distribute into Europe. But um, effectively, there's a rule of origin which will would allow a product such as ours to be distributed into Europe with a zero customs charge. So we're currently in the process of, um, you know, of doing the work for that. And then once we do, then, yeah, we'll, we're, we're looking, you know, we'll be looking very seriously later in the year about um, uh, distributing direct to consumer um, through international markets. But I think, um, yeah, uh, it's been it's been very difficult, even even on goods coming in. So we some of the good goods and the items within our supply chain we, we, we receive from Europe and we've had either it's a levy on them or there's been a delay at customs um, because the clearance is just, you know, they, they've just got a backlog. So it's been, for brands and for businesses, it's been very, very tough. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, regarding your uh, your future plans, so what's uh, what's exciting for, for you? What do you have on your plate and uh, you can share with us as well? Yeah, so um, lots of exciting things. I think um, exciting um, relationships growing throughout the brand. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're continuing to work with some, you know, more and more great people um, who are, you know, going to help continue to drive our growth. Um, we've got some exciting, really exciting partnerships lined up, which will, you know, uh, build the awareness of the brand uh, and the product and actually turmeric as an ingredient. Because when you look at the, you know, the market 
the market awareness of, of what we're doing is is fractional so to be doing you know the the rate of sale which we're doing at this moment in time is is you know from my perspective phenomenal because when we get the market awareness up to that you know uh, and then we get the serviceable market you know increased as well it's going to be a very very exciting time because um all of those people are going to be experiencing the impact and the benefit of, of a range such as, such as ours um so you know the, the amplification the 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 increase in awareness of the brand so through all of the work that the team is doing consistently i'm very very excited around that um and then we also have a lot of um new product development in the pipeline and um, some really interesting products um which uh, are products which we've taken learnings from whether it be customers uh, you know um, sports teams athletes uh, the everyday individual um surveys feet that we've mm -hmm. taken it all in and um we we we're, we're really excited to to launch <clears throat> some really exciting new new shots which will supplement our, our existing range and again help to build the awareness of of uh, of, of the brand so um all of those are, are really exciting um you know, I get I get excited around you know efficiencies in our supply chain. So um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not one to uh, yeah, but good. Juliana, you're on mute. <laughs> Great television. <laughs> uh, so my last question for you is, who is going to win this season? Obviously. Mm. Who, who do you, who you bet on in the Premier League? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think Manchester City just have uh, the quality and the the gap at this moment in time. I think they will win the league, um, but I am hopeful Liverpool will come back stronger. They've been very unfortunate with injuries this year. Um, you know, Virgil Van Dijk, Joe Gomez. You know, these are massive players for them and. Um, it shows how big they were because this time last season they were, you know, they were they were flying and so far ahead. And I think um, I'm I'm hopeful that you know that they'll come back stronger next year. Um, but um, but yeah, it, it's tough. Football's football's football is a a ruthless game, and it's um, people don't understand what what you mean when you say that because you have to be actually in it to yeah, see it. You know, yeah. it's. Um, it's a very competitive industry, um, but one which you can learn a lot from and actually enjoy and, you know, you know, flourish in. And it's a phenomenal experience. And, and I'm very, you know, very fortunate to have, to have had the career and still be having the career that I'm having. And, you know, I'll continue to work hard um, to, 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 to keep it going. I think you're doing an amazing job and uh, I, I want to congratulate you for the mentality that you have that's very customer centric. We don't have that enough. I wish people that listen today or will listen tomorrow everywhere will see, you know, and understand how much it matters. The product market fit, the loyalty, building awareness, building relationships with your customers. Because I took a lot of notes here, you know, focusing on your team, being disciplined and consistent and you will, uh, and you will make it. And uh, thank you so much for coming today. This was a uh, an amazing episode and i hope you beat crystal palace on saturday thank you very much yeah it'd be good be nice to get some goals yeah yeah thank you <laughs> thank you well uh thank you everyone for watching today thank you for the questions barry and uh uh, uh brendan and yeah i'll see you guys next week uh, thank you valentin for uh being the referee again <laughs> Thanks, uh, thanks everyone, and thank you, Thomas, for uh, for thank being you. with us and uh, looking forward for more people to to understand the the impact of uh, of turmeric and uh, of having a balanced uh, diet uh, in in their lives. Yeah, no, well, thank you very much, thank you, Andrea, thank you, Valentin. It's been a, a fantastic, uh, you know, talk with you both, and um, yeah, I, I've watched quite a few of your interviews and love what you guys are doing and. You know, more and more people should should listen to to, to what you guys uh, have to say uh, because it is extremely insightful and can help uh, you know businesses and you know whether it's uh, our business or other businesses. There's uh, there's a lot of value which you offer and it's great that you guys are doing this. So you know, keep it up. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see you know let's see you guys win year over year, and uh, <laughs> you know let's go. Precisely. Uh, thank you, thank you everyone for watching. Bye.